Welcome back to Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. And uh, we're going to go directly to the phones. We've got Eddie McBride on the line, the president and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce here in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, Eddie, how's it going? Are you excited about the uh, cool weather coming? I'm excited as well. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Just heard Ron Roberts say it. it's already starting to impact Amarillo. So that's good news. We're just uh, not too far down the line. It'll be nice to have this change, especially like a... Dave was saying earlier, it's this rain. Hey, it's a few weeks early. The fair's not uh, not for a couple weeks, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but I, uh, I, don't I worry. No matter how much it rains now, it'll still rain during the fair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I, I was just rooting for the fair to be here. I said, "Man, come on, fair!" Because <laughs> well, it always rains during the fair. <laughs> you know, yeah, someone does. someone noted uh, months ago that it always rains when school ends and when school starts, and you know that's right. Well, it's it's not too far away, and we're looking forward to the fair being able to get conducted. And I know they'll do it safely. We <clears throat> we're uh, working with them, obviously, because if the fair can open and run well, then we can do the barbecue on October eighth. We uh, we hope we have we're trying to make our final plans for that. You know, these things are difficult during this pandemic. Is making these uh, uh, trying to do all the logistics and the planning and to make sure you, that you do everything that both protects the performances as well as the guests. So it's a it's a little bit different planning than what we're used to. So uh, are you going, if, if the fair works, are you going to look at what they're doing and, and try to kind of mimic what they're doing? Yeah, they've already given us their plan that's been approved by the city, and so we're developing ours and should have it finished this week. So uh, we know it's probably going to be a reduced uh, effort because obviously the distancing that you, we're going to have to follow. So we just hope that we have enough cooking teams to be able to do it. So it might be a little bit different than what it has been in the past. We're still still doing our best to make sure that we can do this and return to normalcy and offer up an opportunity for people to have a good time. So is this going to open up the door to, I don't know, having the the, uh, uh, the Lubbock Uncorked event? Yeah, that's a different situation as well because of the wineries aren't. We're, we've reached out to them, and we haven't had a good commitment as far as how many of them would actually uh, travel. That's what their issue is, is both traveling, because obviously they've been impacted by the closure laws as well. And so uh, it's, it's uh, well, I mean, we're still trying our best to plan it. And, and uh, I, we'll know that answer, I think, over the next, uh, by the end of the month as well. Mm, sounds good. Hey, cool. Eddie, um, I, I'm, I'm hearing that we've got a little – your phone and uh, my phone don't sound too good this morning. I think we have some issues just to let our audience know. I think we've got some technical issues that we're working on. But, Eddie, I did want uh, to uh, – the, the big issue I wanted to talk to you about, and, and it is in the AJ today. Wait a minute. Is that the AJ? Yeah, I believe it is. Um, it's about the economy, a loss of tourism and drop in the economy expected for Lubbock as sporting events will have limited attendees this year. The coronavirus pandemic uh, will limit how many fans can attend the games. Um, Texas Tech recently did cost cutting, where they laid off 40 people and cut the salaries of those making over 30,000. Uh, that's the just an athletics department. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. But but all that affects the uh, Lubbock economy. And John Osborne, uh, he's quoted as saying. He's looking on the bright side. Better to have some games than no games at all. But, uh, of course, Texas Tech, as you have said before, is just uh, they're an integral part of this Lubbock economy. And we have them back sort of, kind of. But I did, I wanted to ha- have you comment, Eddie, because I know your thumb is on the businesses in Lubbock. How, how does it look? Uh, tax revenue wise for the city well compared like uh, i haven't seen the august figures yet i i, I think uh, if they've been out i haven't heard about it and i usually do hear about it but i know july sales tax receipts were just slightly up over where they were last year and and How so that, that part possible? is good um, now, we had the lots overcome though you got to remember one thing that a lot of people don't realize from january to june our consumer spending in Lubbock was down over 30%, and statewide it was down only 11%. So we had a, a lot a more huge hit in our economy uh, because we're based on a lot of, you know, when you send college students home and 
and people don't come from West Texas or Eastern New Mexico to shop and eat and everything, it, it really does have an impact on our economy. So slowly opening the way that we did was, was, uh, was you know, people were out spending money because there was a lot of money. You know, they got the, a lot of people got their CARES Act money, and, and uh, so there was some spending. But nonetheless, it, it's, it, the, no way is the economy going to be good with having a football game or people coming to town because of that 27% occupancy of the football. But there's still going to be a lot of, a lot of folks partying, and let's say safely, but uh, there's going to be a lot of money bought, bought gro- to buy groceries, to buy beer, and, and to celebrate football. And so I think all in all, if you look at the same thing that John Osborne said, I'm, I'm the half-cup um, optimist as well, half-empty, but uh, it's good news because anything in this economy is good. I mean, anything is good. No, it's not going to be anywhere near what it would have normally have been. And so obviously that's still going to have – a negative impact on us overall by virtue of the fact that we won't see as good of an uptick as we would have if it was a full stadium. So uh, one of the things last Friday we had the jobs numbers come in, the unemployment rate overall for the uh, U.S. went down to, I think, 8.4%. Are we seeing uh, in Lubbock where people are getting back to work here? Yes, sir. We have still around 10,000 people that are out of a job, though, so you know, we, we lost close to 20,000 when it first got started. So let's say that when the pandemic first hit and it really got the lockdown uh, significantly impacted us. So uh, we, we, we are doing better, uh, you know, at a 6.4%. We're still twice the unemployment numbers as we were a year ago. So if you look at it from that perspective, the only good news is it's not we're not continuing at those high numbers uh, is where we were almost 10%. We were 9.10%. Uh, we're a little bit better off than we were, obviously, in the worst part of the pandemic. So you may or may not know this, but uh, how do we compare to the rest of the state of Texas? Well, we're always, uh, even during the pandemic, we're uh, going to be a little bit more employed than everybody else. I think Amarillo is uh, a little bit better than us in this last wave and a, a few other smaller metropolitan areas. But we're better than uh, the state average, and we're better than the major metropolitan areas. Lubbock historically has always had better unemployment figures than the rest of the state. Okay, Eddie, we've got to take a quick break. It is 743. We'll be right back on News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO with Eddie McBride, the president and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce here in Lubbock, Texas. We're back on News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO, mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. We've got uh, Eddie McBride, the president and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce here in Lubbock, Texas. We do have a, a text question. It says, does the chamber have a fund that they can draw from to help businesses around Lubbock? There's, um, over the pandemic, there's been various money that's been made available, both the federal government as well as the federal government passed money to the state and to the city. The uh, Secure Lubbock Fund was actually, uh, I, I think it was back in June, and that was between LEDA put some money in Lubbock Economic Development Alliance and the and the South Plains Association of Governments through their 504 program. Now SPAG and the Caprock Finance Corporation now has another tranche of money, $4 million, that's going to be coming out sometime soon. They're getting all their ducks lined up and everything. Uh, and, and I think that's going to be some more money that is going to be made available to small businesses. And uh, we, we, they haven't announced anything yet, but we will be doing further interviews and we'll be doing webinars on how folks can gain access to that information yeah. so that they can do applications. That should be right around the corner. So, Eddie, one of the things that I guess we should say is, uh, you know, Lubbock Chain of, of Commerce itself does not hand out money to businesses. They help them in, by uh, helping them uh, connect with money that could be out there through other organizations. That is absolutely correct, yes, sir. And we'll spread that information wide and far so everybody will have access to it. And they'll have a date uh, that they say that they'll start at, uh, start taking applications, and we'll, we'll announce that as soon as they, they release that information. Yeah. Okay, Eddie, what's going on uh, with the Chamber of Commerce this month? What do you all have going on? Well, we, we've been doing a COVID-19 business pivot series of uh, webinars, and like this Thursday on September 10th, we're having one that talks about the theme is safely reopening your business. 
and staying Lubbock mm-hmm. safe in some regards, getting Lubbock safe. So we're doing that via via Zoom on Thursday, September 10th at 10 o'clock. And then next week, September 15th on Tuesday at 10 o'clock, we're doing every ways to market your uh, – easy ways to market your business. And all of these are changes that folks are looking at because of the COVID uh, pandemic. But the big event that we have next week is we have the, the State of the System uh, luncheon, uh, which is with uh, Chancellor which Chancellor Mitchell with President Skubmanick and President Rice Spearman, which is their annual State of the Texas Tech University System presentation. That is going to be uh, in person, but because of occupancy and, and the requirements to have small crowds, we're going to be at the Overton Hotel, and we're already booked on the live end, but we're certainly – taking all sorts of folks' opportunity to see it virtually and to have an opportunity to hear the top three uh, administrative officials at Texas Tech talk about what's going on right now and what's going to go happen in the future. I think that uh, folks should be really interested in tuning, tuning in to that. And all the information is going to be on our website at lubbockchamber.com, or folks can call into the office at 761 7000 that, that is a very well-attended event every year, and it's really got great information. Chancellor Mitchell and both presidents will do a very good job talking about the largest regional economic engine in West Texas, Texas Tech. Well, Eddie, tell me this. Uh, from your perspective, uh, what, what could you advise Lubbock businesses uh, to expect in the future? What do, you, what do you see looking down the road? We had a... We had the president of the, or the chairman of the Dallas Federal Reserve, Rob Kaplan, come in about a month ago, and he said essentially, even if there was another spike at the end of the year, we're we're probably going to be having a constriction of our overall economy by about five percent. And he didn't think unemploy, unemployment, even with a, another spike, would get up too much higher than it is right now. So all in all, it seems like we have weathered, potentially weathered the worst of the storm. However, it's going to be elongated. The Chairman Kaplan didn't see really any economic relief until the spring of 2021. So we're going to be plodding along. Let's hope the market continues uh, on, a, on a positive spell, and let's hope that obviously businesses are able to find the money to, to keep their margins together so they can keep their employees and hire their employees back. And That's the only thing that I see that's going to happen. It's just going to be a little bit longer sludge that we're going to have to go through to get past this this low economic experience right now. Uh, do you think uh, once we get past the election coming up that it will open up some doors to opening up more? That's that's what a lot of people say. The, the, the Fed Reserve chairman didn't have – he said that he didn't think the – he said that the, the all the silliness that's going on right now and what happens on the election day really won't have an immediate impact on the economy. Whoever comes in as president, whether it be President Trump that gets rehired or where Biden comes in, either way, you won't see the result of that until a little bit after that. Sure, the markets may react one way or the other, but but in reality, as far as our recovery, he did not see that having an immediate impact on our recovery. So that's why he said the economic relief really won't be seen seen until, until the spring of next year. Now, no one has a good unclouded crystal ball. I mean, anybody who states this are just doing it on statistics and numbers, and I trust what Mr. Kaplan was saying, but I also know that who knows that things could get worse or things could get better, just depending on when we can get a vaccine and when we can stay in control of this of this pandemic. All right, Eddie. Well, we want to thank you again for coming on to News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO, um, and we'll we'll talk to you again here in about a month, if not before. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for letting me come on. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back after these messages.